Using logic, many will come to the rational conclusion that by making the sliver of light thinner and thinner, the resulting image on the wall behind me will grow smaller. However, as I close the gap so tightly that only a smidge of light passes through, the image on the wall becomes enlarged. The very same math behind this trick is the technology that will foster growth in computers. A technology that can even simulate the universe. To explain this phenomenon, we must introduce the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The theory shows that knowing the momentum and the position of a got object is impossible and irrelevant in this universe. Thus, as I timed the gap and lowered the uncertainty in position, the image grew due to the increased uncertainty in the momentum. This formula belongs in the vast and mostly unexplored field known as quantum physics. It is all around us and yet is largely unnoticed due to our size. However, if we lower the size of the particles, expressed by Planck's quantum system, the whimsical properties of quanta becomes apparent. I could go on all day about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but in this video, we're going to explore how using math, scientists have applied this property into empowering the human endeavor into the future. A traditional computer, one that is on your desk, in your pocket, or embedded inside you, runs on a binary system consisting of a 1 and a 0. A quantum computer, which in this case is run on the outermost electron shell of phosphorus, runs on the orientation of the electron in relation to the atom's magnetic field. Think of this electron as a compass suspended by the magnetic field. By default, like any ring in this universe, it jumps to the lowest possible energy state. We will call this spin down. However, as I apply energy and begin to spin the compass around, I can reach the opposite state, called spin up. Seems simple, right? Well, not quite so. We don't know for sure what the spin of a given particle is. What we do know is the probability coefficient. So for an instance, I may know that this may jump up to a spin up 0.14 and a spin down at 0.2 thus we can calculate the probability of a given event by so. So until we definitively measure it, the electron is both in a spin up and a spin down concurrently. But this property can be taken advantage of as we see here. <laughs> when we have two of these qubits get together, we can make four computations, four distinct values, unlike a conventional computer, which can only ever have two, one and zero. As you can see, the first two are straightforward. Both are in spin down or spin up. However, there is additional two states, arranged in something called an entangled state. In this state, the qubits are no longer independent from each other, and are always in opposite directions. So when we measure one of the electrons and find that it is in spin down, we instantly know that the other is in spin up, even if it was on the other end of the universe. To represent this, we can use a pendulum. Specifically, two of them, which are in an entangled state, as shown. When I spin one of the bobs, eventually the other gains momentum and takes over. There are always an entangled opposite state at any point. So, if we combine all the qubits, we notice that there are four total values, which is exactly twice the number of values binary has. However, if I add another qubit to the equation, there's a total of eight values. When I add another qubit, there's 16 values. Now, a pattern is starting to emerge. These values are just 2 squared, cubed, and so on and so forth. If I have 250 qubits, this becomes 2 to the power of 256, which is, well, a big number. When I compare this to the number of atoms in the observable universe, the computing power is larger. So, theoretically, we can compute the whole universe with this wonderful technology. There is a caveat though, like I mentioned before, when the quanta are measured by us, it jumps to a definite spin state that explains the erratic pattern we saw at the start of the video. Thus, we must program the computer so the result of the computation is a definite state. So, with lots of maths, quantum physics and clever coding, which, believe it or not, is also math, we can st simulate the entire universe with relative ease. Now, isn't that a great example of how maths can pay our future?